Hey, how's it going? Dan here, co-founder of PromptUp. And today we're gonna to talk about how you can use an automated system to let LLMs optimize your prompt using reinforcement learning. And I promise it will be a lot simpler than it sounds. So we've written a lot about using LLMs to optimize LLMs, um, you know, to optimize your prompts, and you can catch it, most of these articles on our blog. Um, and we haven't been blown away by any of them for the most part, because we've just continued to find that the best process is using a human plus an LLM in some capacity to help optimize your prompts. And we still still believe that today, even after reading through this last um, paper that we'll be discussing. Um, but yeah, there's been a ton of papers around this. And a lot of times they just don't present evidence that is super overwhelming. And I just haven't seen a lot of them actually used in practice. And when we've tested them, again, we found that human intervention using an LLM as a you know place to draw inspiration has been the best process. And a lot of the times the reason for this is the frameworks or methods used in a lot of these papers use a kind of frozen LLM to optimize the prompts. Meaning they're just using the base out of the box LLM as a optimizer. There's not a lot of fine tuning. Um, usually the like innovation happens on a different level um, other than the LLM, maybe in the prompt or in the kind of framework setup. But the LLM that ends up actually optimizing the prompt generally stays frozen. And that is the major difference between what we're going to talk about today and the other methods. Um, so today we're talking about pre-write, um, which is the prompt rewriting optimization method using reinforcement learning. And its biggest differentiator is that the LLM used to rewrite the prompts continually gets fine-tuned. And it gets fine-tuned based on a certain reward, meaning that it aligns with the outputs getting better. So typical flow here is initial prompt comes in, it gets fed to a prompt rewriter, that rewritten prompt goes to an LLM that is frozen to just execute the task. The output comes out, and then that's compared against some ground truth based on some sort of metric, which we'll look at. And if it does good or not good, that's noted and the reward is sent back to the prompt rewriter to make that process better. So in the case that the task output is good, that will be signaled to the prompt rewriter. And if it's bad, that will be signaled as well and changes will be made. And so there's a couple of components, two major components, just the policy function and the rewards. But we'll look at a few of the prompts used, starting with an example here. So here's an initial prompt. Um, the prompt itself is just answer the question. Um, it would get fed to the um, meta prompt, the rewriter prompt that says, you know, rewrite the prompt, add specific requirements, blah, blah, blah. So this could be the initial rewriter prompt. And then it gets a rewritten prompt um, that says here. And that gets fed to the frozen LLM for the task generation. So just a couple, just a quick example of what that looks like. More under the hood of how this process works is a big component is the policy function. Um, and a policy function is just an algorithm that guides the rewriter model to make decisions that will enhance the prompt um, based on whatever reward it's trying to optimize. So it's basically looking at all the stuff it could do. It could add tokens, it could remove tokens, it could alter tokens. So there's a couple of potential actions it could take and the policy function helps it decide which one it should take, which one has the most prob highest probability of generating more rewards, so generating more outputs based on historical um, historical runs. And so let's say you were crossing the street. So to provide an example of a policy function that you, you would you know use every day. Um, so you want to cross the street. This is how your like internal policy function would run. It would evaluate the current state, um, check out the lights, the cars, the distances. Um, your potential actions would be to wait, start walking, speed up, slow down, um, and to the reward in this case is to maximize safety. So over time, as you cross the street more and more often, you learn which actions lead to the maximum reward or the safest experience of getting you from A to B. And you'll do that more often and you continue continually refine that um, over time. And as you go to different cities or different states, you find these different use cases that can help you learn to enhance this policy function. And so thinking back to pre-write, Again, 
the model is just thinking about which actions it can take, which tokens it can remove or add based on what it's done historically to make sure it maximizes the, the reward, which is determined by the effectiveness of that final rewritten prompt in generating outputs that are comparative to the ground truth. So we've been talking about rewards a lot. Um, in this paper, they looked through five different ones. Um, and what these look like are EM, which is just exact match. Um, so this is in a case where you're doing like maybe classifying data. I um, mean, you know that the answer should be, you know, X, Y, or Z. You're looking for an exact match. F1 uh, or F1 score combines precision and recall. Um, so how often the model gets it correct um, out of how many times there are actually correct responses. Perplexity, it measures the model's um, predictive certainty. So lower values indicates that the model was less surprised by the sequence of tokens um, versus higher, it's more surprised. So an example might be a low perplex statement or set of tokens would be the dog ate a bone. That's something that the model presumably would expect. Um, and something that's high perplexity would be the dog ate um, rigatoni with clams. And we have perplexity in F1, that's just a combination of the two. And then length difference is comparing, you know, how long the output is versus the ground truth. And so generally what that all kind of comes together, um, you start with some initial prompt. That prompt is rewritten by the meta prompt, prompt rewriter. Um, they get a bunch of prompt variants from that. All the variants are fed into the LM to generate outputs. And then the outputs are judged against the ground truth. They look at the rewards for that and the prompt rewriter gets continually trained um, based on those rewards. So this is a Google paper. So the model used was a Palm model. Um, they use it across a couple of data sets. All the data sets are data sets um, that have like quantitative outputs where you can use exact match. Um, so we're not like writing anything, doing any prose or creative writing. And they tested pre-write against a couple other of the um, automated methods. And so looking at the major results here, uh, we can see pre-write outperforms the original prompt on, where is it? AG news and natural questions, but it actually underperforms compared on the SS2, SST-2 data set. Um, and the reason for this is this data set is just a sentiment analysis data set and it's pretty basic, you know, so it's like this movie sucked and you have to classify that as negative, positive or neutral. So there's not that much room for improvement of the prompt because it's a pretty simple use case. Um, that's just something to note. Um, you can see all the automated methods fail to beat the original prompt on this, um, <clears throat> this like simple data set which I think highlights an interesting and important thing is that you can definitely like over-engineer your prompts. If it's a simple use case, you don't need to be doing anything super crazy. And you can see pre-write outperforms all of the other um, automated methods that they, they test against. Um, so here's a quick example um, of different um, prompts with different rewards optimized for. So here's the initial prompt, which is just answer the question. And then here are the different rewards set. You can see for the length difference, there's obviously a bigger emphasis on, you know, don't exceed 100 characters, whatever it might be. Uh, for exact match, you can see it's talking about composing something short. So presumably the answer should be is short. We don't want it longer than 15 words. Yeah, if who is the president of the United States, the answer should be Joe Biden. Don't write anything else or anything else. Yeah, so you can see how the prompt changes on, based on the different evaluations and different rewards you're setting up. And this is something you can kind of take over to your own prompt engineering. But time for my favorite part. I'm gonna do a little prompt quiz here. So look at these two prompts um, and try and guess which one performs better than the other. And there is a significant difference between the two. Let me read that for a quick second. All right, well, if you guessed B, then you were correct. The one without the um, numbers is correct. What's interesting here is, you know, compared to the last 
examples we were looking at, the longer um, prompt in the last example actually did not perform that well. It was a, a simpler prompt that performed much better. But in this case, we can see a longer, much more intricate prompt here has the highest accuracy. Um, while these other two are very similar, those A and B that we looked at, but there's almost like a 10% or even plus difference between the two. And so it's just very interesting and goes to show how subtle differences in a prompt can lead to really big outcomes. And additionally, these two are very close, right? We're talking about a 0.4% difference, but one's a much shorter prompt, you know? So it's just highlights the importance to like really test these things and that things can change um, with just little subtle uh, different words and tokens. They did a breakdown by reward type on overall scores. Um, their table didn't include the original prompt, so we created one for that. Um, and so doing a quick scan here, again, as we mentioned in the SST-2 data set, the original prompt actually performed the best. For these other data sets, we could see that on the exact match, AG News was the best performance in terms of having that reward. F1, we're seeing it again, was the best reward on that um, set. And a couple of other kind of interesting things appear. Um, just honing in on um, perplexity versus perplexity plus F1 is a big kind of difference. Um, and yeah, I think it's a lot of interesting takeaways depending on your use case, you can kind of dive into these and think about how you can bring these over to your evaluation sets. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, any comments below, let us know. If there's anything else you want us to cover in the future, um, we're always here.